You know, I was half thinking I should cancel this Jay's Reviews episode and just move on to SA2, however, I figured it was worth powering through just to produce a quick video on this one. What is this one, you ask? Well, today we're tackling one of the most obscure Sonic games, that would be 2000's Sonic Shuffle, released exclusively for the Sega Dreamcast, releasing after Sonic Adventure and before Sonic Adventure 2. The Sonic Adventure game has been ported to Kingdom Come, but this other Dreamcast game has actually never left the console, and that's because it's not very good, or really worth anyone's time. As Sonic Shuffle isn't an ordinary Sonic game, like I've said, any mascot worth his salt ventures into other genres. In the fifth generation, mascot party games hit the scene with the Mario Party trilogy on the N64, so the other mascots wanted a piece of that pie. That being how we got Crash Bash for the PlayStation and Sonic Shuffle for the Sega Dreamcast. But the weird thing is, not counting the multiplayer of Sonic and the Secret Rings, Sonic Shuffle is the only Sonic Party game. Mario Party's been going on well past the N64, still being around today, but Sega takes this really weird approach with Sonic. Despite having this diverse roster of really great and memorable characters, we have to pray to the Elder Gods to get a Sonic spin-off that isn't a f***ing Olympics game. But I get ahead of myself. I can surely revisit this matter numerous times throughout this retrospective, and that's that Sega is willing to take risks with Sonic, but when they screw it up, they just blame the idea and never do it again. I mean, Sonic Shuffle got some pretty mediocre scores from the critics. Looks like Sonic and party games just cannot go together unless we snowboard down Seedside Hill for the upteenth time in the majestic dream events. But we're a little early in the retrospective to complain about how they handle Sonic now. I hesitate to call Sonic Shuffle a ripoff of Mario Party. I mean, it totally is one. As Eurocom took the party idea and made something more uniquely Crash Bandicoot with Crash Bash, regardless of whatever you think of that one. But Sonic Shuffle was literally made by Hudson Soft, the people who made Mario Party. I'm just imagining Sega being like, yeah, we want Sonic Party, so just hire the people who do it for Mario and then tell them to do it for us, we can't possibly fail. It might surprise some folks, or maybe not. This is actually my first time playing this game. I don't own it anymore, but when I was getting into my retro gaming binge in 2010 and 2011, Sonic Shuffle was a game I owned on my Dreamcast. It felt really cool to own the forgotten Sonic game, which is exactly what it felt like playing Knuckles' Chaotix for the first time during my emulator kick in 2015. However, much like Chaotix, it didn't really take me a long time to figure out that I didn't think this game was particularly good. I never made it past the first board of the campaign because it's just bullshit. Maybe they don't re-release unpopular Sonic games for a reason, however, I'm against the practice, if only because it's an attitude like that that leaves us still without PC ports of games I like, so yeah. I'm basically talking about all the things not related to the game, so let's just get into it. Something this game got flack for in its reviews is the degree of tutorialization. By that, I mean this game actually has a lot of tutorials, but oftentimes they don't go very in-depth, even though this game certainly needs it. Like these stage tutorials, here we are in the jungle, would you like to hear the tutorial? Sure, alligators will open and close their mouths and you can walk on them when it's closed. Let's just not mention how being in the water will get you dragged by the current into a position on the far left of the game board. Might have been good to mention that one. Glad the computer players learned that mistake so I didn't have to. They also bizarrely don't give you much time to read the instructions on these mini-games. Like, if you take too long to read and comprehend the rules, it'll just start for you. While some of them are self-explanatory, others aren't, so I just don't get that aspect of it. But that's just kind of splitting hairs. What's really important is that this game gives Sonic a house! Damn, bro, this house is boring as hell. Who let Tails through the back door? Oh god, what's he doing?! Quick, what's something Sonic Labyrinth, Sonic Shuffle, and Sonic and the Secret Rings all have in common? Each of these games show that Sonic has a house. There you go. If Sonic has a house, that means your game is cursed to not be very good. You heard it here first, folks. Okay, gotta get my game face on. I've been sitting here cracking jokes like I'm some comedian. Let's do a serious analysis of Sonic Shuffle. Alright, so the game starts off in Emerald Coast, which is important because that was a level in Sonic Adventure. Oh, uh, wait. You must be waiting for some kind of meaningful point to be made about that. It's not hard to remember Emerald Coast, because if you play this game legitimately, that's like, the only stage you'll ever see, and they must have known it too, because they completely gave up on these names after that, like, Nature Zone, Riot Train, and Fourth Dimension Space. Goodness gracious, what were they thinking? They can't pay me enough to play this. Since this is a Sonic game released prior to 2011, it has a story. Like, seriously, Sonic Spinball, Sonic Shuffle, Sonic Labyrinth, all these freaking games, they'll have a story. This time, Sonic and company have been dragged into an imaginary world, a world born of the dreams of all the people around the world. Yeah, it makes no sense to me either, but anyway. The gang is led by Lumina, a magic girl who wants to save Imaginary World as our new villain. Void has shattered the perfect precious stone around the land, and then we have to get them all back. And I don't know why they decided to make Void sound so sad. Like, I laughed because I actually felt bad for him as the gist of his character is that he represents the emptiness that allows dreams to exist in the first place, so therefore, he's very lonely. Lumina and Void are two halves of Solaris. I mean, Illumina, 
and merging them back together will save the day after our boss fight with Void second form. All right, bizarre premise aside, I just think again, wow, they actually bothered to come up with this storyline and give it full voice acting. On that subject, returning from Sonic Adventure is Ryan Drummond as Sonic, who has certainly toned down his more eccentric elements from SA1, setting up his perfecting the role in SA2. I really miss this guy as Sonic, seriously. Cory Bringus returns to play Tails, but he'll be recast by the next game because he has clearly gone through some changes since SA1. So what do you say, Sonic? Let's find the Chaos Emeralds before Eggman does! Jennifer Dooliard is Amy again, saying this line everyone goes back to when counteracting the psycho fangirl Amy critique. Knuckles' actor from SA1 is actually not back in this game. His voice clips will still be reused every now and again, but Knuckles is now just played by Ryan Drummond. So if you wanted to hear him in a Sonic game do his normal voice, then here it is. Well, I've got nothing better to do. I love that line. Like, what, Knuckles? You have nothing better to do than hunt for precious stones on party game boards? But of course, the best character in the game is Dean Bristow as Dr. Eggman. I freaking love that line, what can I say? Eggman has no role in this game's story, he just persists as a prankster on the game board and I just find that highly entertaining, especially when it's going oh, yeah! during the minigames. Although Dr. Eggman has by far the ugliest character model in the game and the worst Eggman model I have ever seen. The animation in Sonic Shuffle, as you can no doubt tell, is just a watered down version of the animation from Sonic Adventure, which really seems like an impressive feat of low quality, but you get used to it after a while. The voice acting was overall fine, and the pacing of cutscenes is actually improved from Sonic Adventure 1, but the animation's even less dynamic than what that game was offering. So you win some and you lose some. I know this is the part where I must now discuss the gameplay, but I can sum up why this game isn't very good pretty briefly. This game is broken, and it's also not fun. Like, I can imagine screwing over friends and family when playing multiplayer could be fun, however, when trying to get through the single player, it's a nightmare. A trip to the Sonic Wiki has revealed all that I ever needed to know about why I never beat the first level as a kid. The way the game works is that you get a certain amount of cards in your deck. Let's say you use a 6 card and you move 6 spaces, as you need to get to the precious stone space and battle a boss for that stone. Rinse and repeat for however many stones are on the board. You can also steal your opponent's cards and use them if you think that your current selection of cards isn't good. However, when playing against a computer, you'll notice that they will always steal your best cards, and that's because the AI does know your card list while you don't know theirs, and like, that's bullshit! The AI also has the benefit of having a proper understanding of how the minigames work without having any trial and error that the human players need. Like I mentioned before, the rules on these things are hardly clear and have a learning curve, making it all the more frustrating to handle and navigate these, but they are still the best part of the game, because it's actually kind of fun to deal with these chaotic and stupid minigames when the game board traversal is so boring. Credit to Crash Bash here, actually. That game was more about the minigames, the meat and potatoes of party games. So I picked Sonic because he's the main character, but you get no reward for being him, as Tails, Knuckles, and Amy can all take advantage of shortcuts when Sonic can't. The CPU characters will play independent battles, mini-events, and so on. This stuff takes forever to unfold. There's just so much waiting in Sonic Shuffle, which makes the whole thing just a very joyless experience. Winning is also much easier said than done. Like, to win in a single player, you must have the highest amount of precious stones, the highest amount of rings, and a good amount of comp wins, all at once. I seriously lost a round because of my ring count when I had the most stones. It was just so frustrating. So for this playthrough, I invented a great new strategy for managing these comps and these guessing games. You're gonna love it. And what do you know? I won the game every single time. Seriously, it was hilarious just completely break the game. But hey, in my opinion, the odds are so heavily stacked against you, that this is the only proper way to fight back against a game that cheated first. Like, I don't think this game is good, but when essentially playing on god mode, it's certainly very entertaining. Like, by the time of the last stone on Nature Zone, I had three stones, the most comp wins, and was leading in the ring count by a stupid amount. It was so funny. I literally didn't even have to play anymore, because there was no way they could beat me, so watching the AI desperately try was just so good for the soul. And really, that's it for Sonic Shuffle. Like, there is extra content to unlock, but do you seriously expect me to keep playing this so that I can play as Big the Cat in Sonic Shuffle? Yeah, I didn't think so. Ultimately, this game got left behind because it really is just filler. 
no real purpose or drive, it's just there. So if you're a Sonic fan, maybe you could emulate it just to say you've played all the Sonic games, but it's hardly worth anything else. And that's all I have to say for today. Again, I was considering cancelling this video, but I thought it was fun to work on at the end of the day. More so than the Crash and Spyro videos, to be honest, but enough delay. Y'all know what's next, and I'll get to work on that as soon as possible. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.